All right, so I just wanted to reveal something to you that a lot of people don't really pay attention to as far as scripture. Uh, I'm in Romans chapter 10, 5. I'm going to start right there. It says, For Moses writes that the law's way of making a person right with God requires obedience to all of his commandments. But faith's way of getting right with God says, Don't say in your heart who will go up to heaven to bring Christ down to earth. And don't say who will go down to the place of the dead to bring Christ back to life again. In fact, it says the message is very close at hand. It is on your lips and in your heart. And that message is the very message about faith that we preach. I want you to pay attention to this. This is going to test your faith right now. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So this is what I want to get to. Do you believe that Jesus is Lord over your life? Do you believe that he's lording over you? Now, how do you know if he's lording over you or not? Well, the question is, are you talking to people, to your family relatives, to your friends about your life more than you're talking to Jesus about your life? If you're talking to, to them more uh, about your life, could you believe that they got all the answers then you're letting them lord over your life. You're, le you're letting your mama lord over your life. You're letting your father lord over your life. And yes, you're supposed to honor your mother and your father. Yes. But in, in, the, in the Bible, doesn't Jesus says, if you love your mother and your father more than you love me, you are not worthy of being mine. If you love your sons and your daughters more than you love me, you are not worthy of being mine. If you refuse to take up your cross and follow me, you are not worthy of being mine. If you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. Now, let me get more in depth and real down to earth here. When you have a problem at work, when you don't get enough as far as your paycheck, when you don't get the expected refund or when you got ripped off at the store or when you don't have enough money or when the kids are acting up, anything that's upon your mind, when your boss yells at you, anything, anything at all, who do you go to? Do you go to, to our Lord Jesus Christ or do you go to Lord Mama? Do you go to Lord Daddy? Do you go to Lord your friend? Do you go to Lord your cousin? Do you go to the Lord your neighbor? And you start talking about your problems, your issues, your pain, your financial issues or whatever have you, whatever's going through your heart. You start talking to them about what's going on in your life. If you do, if you do that, then you're letting them lord over your life. You're letting their ideas, their opinions, their uh, positions, whatever positions they have of, on their hearts or on their mind, you're letting their positions get into your heart. You're letting them inspire you. And you're not letting the Lord Jesus Christ inspire you. I don't care. Well, I got to say this. I don't care if you go to church seven times a week. I don't care if you volunteer just like in the church Four, four hours a day, every single day. It doesn't matter. You can do all that and still talk to your neighbors about your issues because you feel that the neighbors have a better opinion more than Jesus Christ has an opinion about your life. Therefore, your neighbors are Lord. Lord neighbor. He's my Lord. You're letting their opinions, their ways, their ideas of what you think is right. Even worse, what, what some people do. I got to say this. What some people do, they, they complain. They slander instead of coming to God and saying, Lord, I have this problem. Lord, can you help me? Can you guide me? Can you show me something in scripture where there's a solution of what I'm going through? But instead, most people, they go to their neighbor. They, they, they do some work on their yard or something like that, or they see him on the porch and they complain and they complain and they complain. They slander this store or they slander this and they slander that. They slander people of the world. And they say, well, well, if, hmm, well, I got to say this because God just gave this to me. When they go to their neighbor, they already have an opinion. When you go to your neighbor, you already have an opinion. And so you say the opinion to your neighbor. Slandering a person. Slandering a family member, slandering maybe your kids, slandering maybe your boss. You already have an opinion. 
instead of going to our Lord Jesus Christ and seeing what he says. You see, I don't like saying what people are actually doing because people tend to get all upset and mad at me because I'm exposing what they're doing, even though I don't know them. But that's what I see. That's what I see mostly in the world. People who just go to their neighbor, they go to the friend, so on and so forth. And they say that Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord. But yet they place their neighbor as the Lord. They place their brother and their sister as Lord. So you're not going to be saved by your neighbor. You're not going to be saved by your brother or your sister who you're talking and, and communicating with and just slandering. I tell you what, in the Bible, it says that when you, when you bring, when, when you talk to your neighbor, just bring some edification. Say it's a beautiful day. How about that? Not, man, you know what, man? Man, I'm running out of money. I'm having problems with my car. And my boss don't like me. And I said, nah, man, how about just say, man, it's a beautiful day, man. It's a beautiful for a walk. Man, I saw some bees in my backyard. Rather than just complaining, you're supposed to bring edification. You're supposed to be an encouragement, not a slanderer. So if you truly have the Holy Spirit, you will be speaking encouragement to your neighbor. If you want to talk with your neighbor, you will be speaking encouragement, not just to your life, but also speaking encouragement into the person's life who you're speaking to. So it's not just all about you just slandering someone, you telling your problems to someone. You got a problem, tell Jesus, if Jesus is your Lord. You got a problem, you got some suffering, you got some pain going on, stop telling your neighbor. Stop telling your brother and your sister. And stop saying that they got the best solutions. No, you just want to keep it in the family. But if Jesus is part of your family, if Jesus is truly in your household, then you will invite Jesus into your household. You will invite Jesus into your situation. Now, I'm just saying this to everyone. If if it, if this is convicting you right now, then you need to take inventory of yourself and realize what you're doing wrong. You need to repent and turn to God if you're catching conviction. Because God sees exactly what's going on. All right. But let me continue here. This video going on too long. But I just want to continue. Number 10. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. Believing in your heart that... God raised Jesus from the dead. Now, if Jesus is alive and doing very well, then you would call on him. If he's alive, right? It's not like he died on the cross and he never rose from the grave. He did rise from the grave. And then he ascended to heaven. on the right, of, And he's sitting on the right hand of the Father for your benefit. And he's waiting for you to call upon him. So are you calling upon him or are you calling upon your neighbor? For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by confessing with your mouth that you are saved. Confessing with your mouth. So you can sing a worship song all you want to. You can, you can go to church seven days a week, whatever have you. All that doesn't matter. I don't care what anyone thinks. If you don't believe that Jesus is alive and doing very well, then you're not going to call upon him, are you? You're going to call upon your neighbor. You're going to call upon your brother and your sister and tell them everything about your life. And then you're going to get their opinion. And then everyone, oh, I, I got to say this, since people like to be so American, people like to say, well, everyone has an opinion. Okay, whose opinion is more important? All your neighbors and all your friends and all your family or Jesus' opinion? Which, is, which, which opinion lords over your life? So I just wanted to reveal that because it seems like a lot of us are going to church. A lot of us are saying, praise the Lord. A lot of us are saying, you know, we're singing worship songs and stuff like that, saying Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord. But yet when we go home, we complain and complain and we slander people. And we say that, that they deserve they deserve their image to be slandered. I deserve to pass this slandering, slandering to my neighbor. To my brother and my sister so that they can be on my team so that they can be with my opinions so they can team up with me rather than me teaming up with Jesus but that's what God brought to me because a lot of people say that they're saved because they speak Jesus they say Jesus is Lord but when they go home let's see if they truly call on Jesus when there's a situation or when there's many problems going on throughout the week. Let's see. 
That's how you know Jesus is Lord of their life. When they call upon Jesus, not just in the church, but at home and for every situation, every kind of pain, every kind of suffering, any kind of bondage, any kind of sin that they have in their life. That's how you know that they have Jesus as Lord in their life. Not none of this. Oh, yes, I just love the Lord. Oh, yeah, I, I prayed. Anyway, I, I had enough of, of all these examples and stuff like that that people are doing. I could do a thousand examples of how people are not saved because they're not saying that Jesus, they're not hmm, calling upon Jesus every day, all day, every problem. That's all I got to say. I just want to say I love you. Jesus first, God first, and may the kingdom always come first. Stay blessed in the Holy Spirit. Amen.